You're listening to Talk Line with Zev Brenner, America's premier Jewish broadcast on the air since 1981. And now, here's your host. Welcome back to the program. I'm Zev Brenner, one of the fastest growing Jewish areas in the metropolitan New York area is Rockland County. So we're seeing a lot of growth. We see a lot of anti-Semitism. We see some lot of potential. Whenever I think of Rockland County, I think of Jesse Gestetner because he is the co-founder and executive director of OJPAC, the Orthodox Jewish Public Affairs Council. Jesse, good to have you back again. Thank you, Zeb, for having me. And I appreciate uh, being here. And uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, you invited me to your shows before, uh, you know, I was known as I'm known today for what it's worth. Well, when the media are looking to do something with Hasidic Jews or Orthodox Jews, and especially Rockland County, but beyond that, they say Jesse Gassetner is on the Rolodex. I'm dating myself by saying Rolodex, but they know where to find you. So I invite you for two reasons, Yossi. One hand is a little bit more positive development, one's a more negative one. And that, let's start with the negative one, because I've seen releases that the local Rockland newspaper had an article where they had to talk about a powerful rabbi who's controlling the purse strings. Didn't mention his name, but they, they all the typical canards against Jews, that the Jews are controlling everything, controlling the money. Give us an idea, because it's not the first time that the Rockland Journal News, Lohud, has done things which have really attacked the, the Orthodox community. Yeah, so um, the name of the paper, as you said, is the Rockland Journal News. Uh, the headline, I mean, the URL on the website is Low Hot. Low Hot is for Lower Hudson Valley because Rockland County is obviously in the Lower Hudson Valley here in New York. So, uh, you know, we at OJPAC, the Orthodox Jewish Public Affairs Council, we have done work uh, impacting the Orthodox community in New York overall, but we are headquartered here in Rockland County. I live here in Rockland County. And I think in suburban New York, many of these um, issues involving the Orthodox Jewish community, whether on policy and politics, is a little bit different than in the city. So obviously there's more work to be done either north of the city, up here in Rockland and Orange or in Sullivan, or down south uh, towards Ocean County where Lakewood is. (coughs) So as you said, uh, the Rockland Journal News is obviously the largest paper here in Rockland County. Um, also in Westchester, it's owned by Gannett. Gannett is a publicly traded company, and it's basically a media, more like a news and print conglomerate. They own many local and regional papers, such as USA Today and so forth. Um, one of the topics there are an issue um, in Rockland County for quite a while is the East Ramapo Central School District. Uh, the Rockland, Rockland County has basically eight school districts, and uh, a large portion of the Orthodox Jewish community lives in the East Ramapo Central School District. Um, going back 12 to 13 years, a majority of the nine member board are Orthodox Jewish. And over the past 10 plus years, you know, pretty much any time and every time when East Ramapo, as a discussion comes up, uh, you would have people in this paper, many of which are not with the paper anymore, uh, who would write about it and package it. It's like the white Orthodox uh, Jewish board or, um, you know, the private, the, 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 the Orthodox voters who elected the board. It's like, first of all, many things there weren't, aren't really an issue were blown up to be an issue or an issue that you can find elsewhere became a big scandal here. And worse, it's always packaged as to who elected those board members and in which ethnicity those board members exist, which is strange. I mean, uh, when was the last time? And and not only this, it's always with the language that the Orthodox took over the board, the Orthodox take over the board. They're they're full control. They're disenfranchising everybody else. Yeah, so, okay, we'll get to a a detail of of an accusation soon, but it's simply simply on, on rhetoric. I mean... When the New York State, uh, when the city, when something bad happens in the city, does anyone say the the minority control, minority community controlled city uh, council, or minorities uh, uh, took over the city council, or um, I mean, when President Obama was was president, the the idea that that anytime there is a policy problem, uh, that the person in office gets identified by his or her ethnicity. 
and then voters who put them into office are always attached to the problem if it's real or hyped is insane. But that's the basic, that's, that's the, the baseline of, I think, inflammatory coverage that we have seen regarding Israel, well, not just by some people in this paper, I have seen it uh, many times over uh, from many other places. And I think this week, uh, some editors over there went uh, certainly further than anyone would expect that this would happen. And it was, to, which by, by putting out a um, meme of a upcoming article, which was supposed to be published yesterday, Wednesday, how a rabbi controls like $79 million in funding. And then they had this meme of, uh, you know, someone They're in the holding back, the puppet, right? The puppeteer. The, the, the puppet, the puppeteer strings, you know? So even to write rabbi, as Agudas Israel wrote in the press release, how, how is rabbi hood relevant? And then the puppeteer strings, Somebody said, no, it has nothing to do with, uh, you know, old, uh, the old type anti-Semitic uh, anti stuff. It's like more, um, you know, it's the like Godfather. New anti-Semitism, anti not the old. No, 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 get yeah, this. Like the, 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 the picture of the Godfather film is also, is also this. So the, the, guy, the guy who heard it says, ah, oh, so it's not just typical anti-Semitism. So the rabbis are mafioso. Like, what are you saying? Um, but I, I want to say an interesting thing. I'm quite surprised uh, that someone at the paper, the editors at the paper approved it because I think in more recent years, we have seen an increased level of balance and fairness uh, coming out of that newsroom. I think a lot of the antagonistic uh, uh, path, a, a lot of the antagonism of the past that used to be so ingrained in that paper five, 10 years ago, I can say that a lot of it, uh, you know, is gone, has moved on. Um, I, I don't expect that a reporter should see a story the way I see it, but it isn't about perspective. Like, you know, it's about getting the facts, how they are, some undisputable facts. Uh, I think it is also, um, it's also, uh, it matters the language that you use, you know, orthodox control board and all, all this type of language. I think that's crazy. It certainly is. But what is it in Rockland County? Because, yes, you know, Rockland Journal News got better. But you have, for example, you had Richard Daly, the uh, one of the heads in Rockland County, had this video years ago if the Jews win, <coughs> right? If the Jews win, we lose. And he got censored for it. He's a, um, you had others. You had a candidate running for office again. If the Jews win, you know, we lose. And the school board plays a certainly important role in that. But the fact is, though, that Orthodox Jews are taxpayers. And when you send a child to public school, and I know it is in New York City, I assume it's in Rockland, the same could be about uh, could be about twenty five, thirty thousand dollars a year that's being expended on the child. So if you're sending to a parochial school, it's double taxation. So parochial school parents have every right to be on the school board and to make sure that yeshivas and day schools and parochial schools also get their fair share. Correct. Yeah. So you're referring a couple of years ago, the Republican Party in Rockland County uh, released a video, a storm is coming. And basically, you know, uh, it was in 2017 when the county executive Ed Day ran for re-election. Uh, and it was a big uh, storm, uh, if you will. Um, and, and I think even, even with Ed Day as a county executive, I think a lot of, that's what I'm saying, overall, uh, 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 the, uh, a lot of things the, improve, right? Yeah, th things have improved and calmed down. So that's why to me, this 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 um, this meme and this headline is completely, you know, whoa, what happened here? Um, have you reached out to the publication? Yeah, we have uh, we have been in contact, and we also went on Twitter today to list multiple uh, a decade long multiple problems with the reporting, specifically on East Ramapo, because to me it isn't uh, East Ramapo. If it's a local issue, then go when you know. Uh, but it isn't the East Ramapo. I think it is. It it, it has become a Jewish issue. Uh, at least as the community here is concerned. So what gives, listen, you know, I think uh, a melting pot of a city is not the same as in suburban New York. I think the, the battle lines, so to speak, are more distinct, they're clearer. Um, I think neighborhoods are, are seen more, you know, people of this ethnicity would live here and that ethnicity would live there. I think it's more visible. Um, so I think that's I think that's a matter, and and as I said at the top of uh, of this interview, you know we have work to do all over New York, but indeed in in places like Rockland and so forth, it is uh, it is. Um, yeah, you have your work cut out for you is what you're correct, saying. Correct, correct. And going back and going back on the tax issue, 
uh, a standard student here in East Ramapo gets a uh, yeshiva student gets maybe thousand dollars a year of, of tax services, which would be eight hundred or something for busing and a hundred something for books. Uh, a public school student gets twenty three thousand dollars. So you can have basically twenty three yeshiva students, and you wouldn't even cover one public school student. And uh, majority of the budget gets paid by local taxpayers. And a majority of taxpayers in this district are Orthodox Jewish. So, so you have a, a, a school budget of, uh, you know, $240 million. I'm not talking about the lunch program and Title I, which is federally separate funds and outside of this math, $240 million. Uh, more, of, uh, uh, more, more than half of this amount is from local taxpayers. A solid majority of taxpayers here are from within the community. So nobody's complaining that the public school gets funded, but then to then turn around and uh, hey, suggest- hey, can- pay, pay your taxes, but don't get any benefits. We go let the public school kids get all the benefit. And that's what they're really saying. And the yeah, but correct, but, but I'm saying even more, it isn't about it isn't about the public school not getting what it is required by law. They're getting, but, but it's dis- disenfranchising the yeshiva kids. Abs- exactly. Exactly. I mean, I mean, people forget how this started the 15 years ago when taxes used to go up uh, continuously. Busing service were a disaster. Special ed services were a disaster. Uh, uh, there wasn't any consideration for, for uh, um, um, you know, customs and religion and so forth. Um, and now, just giving an example. Bussing. There is a, a, a certain amount of money that, a dis, that the district allocates for bussing. It's a statewide standard. But what the district has done is and say, you know what, instead of we should have one huge company to run it for uh, 27,000 private, private school students, you know what, each student has an allowance. You have what, 100 students? You can give in a bit, and if you can deliver the service, on the amount which would which wouldn't cost more if we the district would run it on our own, go ahead and run it. So this is a service where it doesn't cost uh, taxpayers an extra cent. It doesn't cost the state an extra cent, but it helps we as parents to have a busing service run by people from the school, people from within the community, people who can adjust according to budget. And then of course we pay extra for busing because the public school doesn't pay busing for the whole year. Uh, so. And even special ed, uh, uh, in the past, you know, people, people who had special ed needs, again, not in budget, it's about the same money that can be spent here, you spend it elsewhere because it's more uh, 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 sensitive and accommodative. That's the difference between having on the board members who care or who don't care. And it's a totally important. Uh, before, I don't want to belabor the subject, but getting back to the Rockland Journal story, did they, <clears throat> did they list the name of the rabbi? I just had a rabbi pulling district. Did they actually mention his name? In the no, rabbi? no, they didn't. They didn't that list. Makes it even, uh, that the, makes it even worse. Oh, yeah. So they didn't list the rabbi because, as you said, it's it's like, oh, a rabbi pulling the strings, uh, you know, with the lighting here. It's cool. The rabbi. Um, <laughs> like a but, horror movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's not like it's not like they say rabbi so-and-so pulls the strings. Then it's OK. That's his name. That's his title. And. We're going to have an expose, but it's like, as I said, rabbi. Oh, yeah. Shocking. Our guest, Yossi Gestetner, co founder and exec director of OJPAC, the Orthodox Jewish Public Affairs Council. Some good news, at least for Rockland County, is that it seems that the community will be getting more power in the redistricting. So let's look at that. In five towns and other areas, they're taking away some of the Jewish power, the Jewish clout. But in Rockland County, it seems like you may be getting some more. What's happening as far as that's concerned? Yeah, so um, Rockland County, as a county, not to get too uh, too deep into the numbers, has around 340,000 people. Um, until now, and, and, and the biggest, uh, the biggest, let's back up, Rockland County has 340,000 people spread over five towns. Uh, the largest town is the town of Ramapo. Uh, almost all Orthodox Jews in this county live in the town of Rampo. There are some people moving into new areas and have a straw and um, Clarkstown, but um, like 90, 90% something are still in, in Ramapo. And until the, uh, as of the current map, we as a community are split with three, between three assembly members, which means our vote, our relevance, our say in government politics has been crushed for a decade. According to the new map, 
uh, the community will be split in two um, assembly seats rather than three. So it automatically increases the relevance of the Orthodox Jewish community. I wouldn't call it a super Jewish district as people uh, you know, called either the Felder seat, the state senator, even Simcha Eichenstein's assembly seat in Brooklyn, but it's a district which is more Ramapo than it used to be, and it has more members of the Orthodox community used to be. So I think uh, this potentially changes the dynamic for, uh, as of now, the assembly member is Mike Lawler, a Republican. He is uh, you know, very energetic, very friendly. He's on the ground. Our constituent services are amazing, but on the other hand, he's a Republican where the Republican Party has only a third of the seats in the assembly. So laws get shaped and policy gets shaped in the majority, not in the sub minority. So <clears throat> I would think that uh, due to the changing uh, map lines, there will possibly be a, um, a strong candidate potentially from within the Orthodox community to run as a Democrat. And, you know, saying it, saying it, I'm saying it here on the record, um, not because there is an issue with Mike as a person or as a candidate or as an elected official. To the contrary, he's very hands-on, active. Uh, constituent services are amazing, but he's still a member of a very small minority. And uh, I think uh, the constituents overall, and especially the Orthodox community, would be served well if they can be a member in the majority. I think it impacts many topics. Now, let me ask you this question. I think a new survey came out. It's not surprising. Majority of American Jews vote Democratic, but the majority of Orthodox Jews tend to vote Republican. So if you're saying a Democrat is going to run, an Orthodox Jew is going to run, it would make sense that it could also be as a Republican because the well, the Orthodox Jews, at least according to the surveys, predominantly- Yeah, okay. So, yeah, but the, but this survey is usually more on national politics. So, so uh, I don't think- um, it's more like when it, when it comes to Congress, U.S. Senate and President, I think uh, Orthodox Jewish people tend to vote overwhelmingly Republican. When it comes to more localized stuff, either even governor, but state Senate, state assembly, I think it is a candidate by candidate situation. There is no one size, you know, there's only like either with us or against us. I don't think, I don't think that's, that's the case. Uh, but I don't think, you know, if you want to have a Republican, you can continue with uh, with Lawler. Who knows? Maybe that will right. that, maybe that's what the immediate future holds. I don't know. Is I talking about Aaron Weider, by the way, running? He's very popular. He's has held elected office in Rockland County. He's so, yeah. So obviously, uh, I think if if there will be a strong Democrat, um, it would it would very likely be, um, you know, Aaron Weider. Um, I think uh, unless Justin Fetter wants to run. No, as of now, no, you know, considering my age and my energy, I think at this time I, I like to be uh, an operative. I like to be on the policy front. Um, who knows what five, 10, 15 years down the road would, uh, you know, have a store for me. And I'm not trying to position myself and say the perfect words. You know, as of now, I have no, a decade ago, I was thinking about Congress and a decade later, I'm still in no rush to run for office. But um, yeah, I think, I think, uh, you know, who knows, speaking about Congress, who knows? What if Mike Lawler des decides to run for Congress? Uh, the seat has become now more Republican than it was, according to the new map. The incumbent is Monday Jones, a Democrat, a freshman member. So if somebody wants to run as a Republican against a freshman member and a new district and a district that's more Republican, and this district now, people maybe are not aware, it's not just, oh, it's a Rockland. It's a district that goes all the way up to Sullivan County part of orange and goes, so all of Sullivan, all the mountains where people are in the summer, that's an, that, that can be a Congress member who uh, can be part of uh, Republican caucus and they can potentially, uh, you know, take over the house. So I know I'm here wearing my cap uh, as a co-founder of our organization. So I'm obviously not calling any favorites here, but uh, political parties are a reality of public policy and we need to contend with that. So uh, hopefully it's not a problem. Well, I think what we're seeing for a while, even in Rockland, this is true of Brooklyn, that a lot of members of the community did not vote. I believe in the last election in Rockland, <clears throat> there was an organization to get out the vote, and I think you did a good job with it, correct? Yeah, correct. So I think uh, of all Orthodox uh, populated neighborhoods that have the best turnout, it tends to be Rockland County. Orange County, like uh, KJ, it depends, but Rockland County... Um, Last uh, in 2017, when Ed Day ran for re-election the second time, 
the Orthodox, there were more than 17,000 Orthodox voters. Uh, when Trump ran in 2020 for re-election, the numbers uh, are potentially 19,000 because it isn't, because there's some elect EDs, election districts where you got a debate what the exact numbers are, but at least 18,000. But, you know, those numbers are not always uh, the same and those are countywide numbers which means for a congressional seat, if there's strong turnout, you can get, you can have air 18,000 uh, 18, voters. But in the assembly, part of these uh, voters are in, are in a different assembly district. So it wouldn't be the same. Sounds like a lot's going on. And the county is growing. It's, uh, it's at least the third Jewish, right? It's maybe even more. So uh, the, the county with the largest Jewish population in the US is obviously Brooklyn. Uh, Rockland County is has been considered many years as the second largest, but even if uh, you know the Jewish overall, but certainly if you look at Orthodox, I mean uh, the, the 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 Orthodox community here counts more than uh, eighty thousand people. Um, KJ, I mean KJ as a municipality has thirty five thousand. You can add another th a few thousand outside, so you know we beat that. Um, but it's but then again, I mean, if you look at Ocean County, um, Ocean County, uh, you know, Ocean County, Where's New Jersey, the uh, they, they, fast growing community. yeah, I think, I think, I mean, if you look at it as in the United States, yeah, you're right, it would be the third. You'd have Brooklyn the first, uh, Ocean County the second, and Rockland the third. Uh, but in New York, Rockland would be the second, uh, second largest. Yes, I guess that they're the co founder and exec director of OJ Pack, the Orthodox Jewish Public Affairs Council. We appreciate your being here with us. Continue success in getting the word out there and making sure that the stereotypes, which are harmful to Jews, is doesn't they don't get away with it like they used to. Thanks to you and your work and continue with and yeah. good success. Once again, I want to uh, tell you, uh, Zev, uh, thank you very much for having me now and for having me here dozens of times over the years, especially in my early days when I started out. I don't know why or how you picked up, but you picked up, uh, you know, that I'm out there and it certainly gave me the, the voice and the confidence to continue working. So I appreciate it. Thank you. But you know what I saw? I saw a Congress in the future, in your future. Right. All right, listen. <laughs> hey, we should have Hasidic congressmen. I'm, I'm all for I, it. Congress, I agree. Senators, we need that. We have a first absolutely. I think I think I think when a community is in need, no one can advocate for your need as the people who feel it themselves. You can have very nice people who want to be fair and nice, but it isn't the same as people who feel it in their own heart and their own kishkas. Because then they're not doing you a favor; you're doing yourself a favor. You're helping your own, you know, your own family. It's it's completely different. It's not, you know. Even a neighbor isn't the same as a family member. And we have the first Hasidic American assemblyman, Sim Eichenstein. So Congress is next, uh, Senate is yeah. next. Um, who knows? But <clears throat> guys, the absolutely. Limit. Yes, you thank absolutely. You for thank you for joining us. Thank you. For, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for listening. For continuous Jewish programs, HawklineNetwork.com or our twenty-four hour a day listen line at six four one seven four one zero three eight nine. For past shows, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, Instagram, and all major podcast platforms or jewishpodcast.org. Thanks for listening to the talklinenetwork.com.